The Challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you husky! The wonder dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in Spin Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Pat Sweeney stirred up the fire in his cabin just before bedtime. The wind howled through the trees outside, and the old trapper piled the wood high in his stove. He started as he heard the sound of a dog team. Who is it? Sergeant Preston, such a life. <laughs> I sure never expected to have visitors in this weather. Got someone with me, Pat. Come on, Tony. Come on in quick. This wind will make icicles out of us all. All right, King. Come on in. Come on, Mike. You come, too. Mike? Who's Mike? I don't see no <laughs> Mike's a dog. Here he is. Oh, I'm so tired. Well, Pat will give you a bed right away, won't you, Pat? Sure, and that I will. Take my cot right there in the con. Thanks. Lie down there beside him, Mike. Oh, this is wonderful. See, that, that is a fine dog he has yeah, there, Sergeant. Yes, it is, Pat. Will you look at that now? The man's asleep already. Oh, he's exhausted. I've been chasing him three days. Now, let's get his boots off. You go on, take care of your dogs, and I'll do this. Well, thanks, Pat. I will. And I'll have some good hot tea waiting for you. This has been quite an unusual case, Pat. Uh, are you too tired to tell me about it? No, I'll be glad to. It all started in the Gold Nugget Bar about three weeks ago. I stopped in there one evening, and Charlie was there playing poker with three men. Suddenly, they began to quarrel. Come on, Charlie. Where'd you get that ace? Out of your sleeve? Oh, you've had too much to drink. I'm quitting. Yeah. Now that you're ahead. That's like you. Listen here, Pierce. I'm not taking any more insults from you. One more crack like that, and I'll knock your teeth in. Take it easy, Charlie. I ain't afraid of you. Or that cur you drag around with you. And keep him away from me. <laughs> Don't you kick that dog, you dog! Come on, we'll settle this right now. Just a minute, boys. What's the trouble? Nobody's calling me a cheat. And he kicked my dog. Ah, oh, you crazy Come on, dog. Charlie. You two can settle this tomorrow when you've cooled off. You better leave, Charlie. I'll see you tomorrow, Pierce. And don't think I won't. Any time you feel like it. Slim, you and Pete better take Pierce home. Right. I'm going Charlie's way. Come on, Charlie. All right. But remember, Pierce, I'll see you tomorrow. Fun. Good thing for him that Preston came along. I'd have given him a beating he wouldn't forget. <laughs> Come on, boys. Let's have another drink before we go. You've had just about all you can take, Pierce. Let's go. I can still make it under your own power. What's eating you, Pete? Pete's right, Pierce. Now, come on. Let's go. Uh, all right, Slim. <laughs> anyway, I got a bottle over at my cabin. We'll drink there. And then you won't have to carry me home. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> hey, let's go. Have another drink, Sam. No more for me, Pierce. Hey, you ain't a sissy. Well, will I finish this one? Uh, as I was saying about Charlie, oh, I just... Oh, what have you got against him? He's all right. You think so, huh? Well, I don't. Pierce, you're just jealous, Charlie, ever since he struck gold. Now that he's got more money than you have, you're always trying to pick a fight with him. Who said he made any good? Huh. Maybe I better tell you boys something. The only friends I got. Are... They ain't worried about money. I can leave here any time I want. Ah, you're drunk. Drunk, am I? Now, let me show you something. Come on over here. What do you got? Why are you taking that stone out of the fireplace? I told us all about this, but you too. I want you to see this. Looks like a case. A jewel case. Look. It's a diamond pin. Holy smoke, that's a big diamond. <laughs> yeah, this is my ace in the hole. 
If my claim ain't any good, I'll sell it and buy a good one. Where did you get it? I won it gambling down in Whitehorse. But don't you tell anyone about it. Of course not. <laughs> now you can't say I'm jealous of Charlie now. <laughs> On King! On your husky! Sergeant Preston! King! Oh, your husky! What's wrong, Slim? I was just going to the barracks to get you. Something happened? Sure has. Pete and I went over to see Pierce this afternoon. Yes? When we got near his cabin, we heard a big row going on. Before we could get to the door, Charlie Welsh bloody and out of breath. All he said was that from now on, Pierce would never call him a cheat again. Well, I thought Charlie would forget about that quarrel last night. He's pretty mad about Pierce kicking his dog, Mike. Well, he didn't forget it. Pete and I rushed into the cabin and found Pierce lying on the floor. We thought Charlie had knocked him out. Hurt him much? Hurt him. Charlie was right when he said Pierce would never call him a cheat again. He knocked him down and Pierce hit the back of his head. And he's dead. Dead? Let's get over there right away. All right, King, up front. On King, we hung your husband. Right. Pierce was badly bruised and the back of his head had hit the sharp edge of the stove. He must have died almost instantly. I left Pete and Slim with Pierce's body and went directly to Charlie's cabin. Just finished patching up the cuts on his face, cuts that Pierce had made with his fists. He was surprised when I came in. Why, what? Well, Sergeant Preston, what are you doing here? You know, don't you, Charlie? Why, no, I don't. I hear you went over to see Pierce this afternoon. I sure did. I gave him a beating he won't forget. You mean you don't... Well, just what happened? We had a fight. I hit him and knocked him out. You didn't stop to see how bad he was hurt? I certainly wasn't going to pick him up and nurse him. No. I left. Anyway, a couple of his pals came. They took care of him. Slip and Pete. Sorry to have to do this, Charlie. But I have to put you under arrest. Arrest? For what? You heard him call you a cheat last night. You saw him kick Mike. He deserved a beating, and I gave it to Charlie. him. Charlie... Pierce is dead. What? When you knocked him down, he hit his head. It killed him. Killed him? What will all this mean? It means you'll go on trial for murder. Murder? But you're dead. Come on, Charlie. I'll have to put you in the local jail. You'll be there until we can take you to Edmonton for trial. Well, I guess there isn't anything I can... Do about it. That's your far gone, Charlie. What about Mike here? Will you let him stay at the jail with me? Sorry, but it's against the rules, Charlie. You better let me keep Mike. I'll bring him over to see you. Thanks, Sergeant. All right, I'll go with you. But I'm telling you right now, I'll never hang for the murder of yours. I'll never hang, I tell you. Charlie in jail made arrangements for him to be sent to Edmonton in two weeks for trial. The following Saturday night, I was walking down the main street in Dawson. It was after midnight. Suddenly, I heard a lot of noise, men shouting, and then there was a shot. There was a crowd of men gathered in front of the Gold Nugget Bar. One of them saw me coming. Did you see what happened? They started slugging each other all of a sudden. Better hang on to Pete. Here comes Sergeant Preston. Sergeant! Just in time. Pete shot Slim. Let the bounty through, boys. Here, Slim, Sergeant. He is shot. Who did this? Pete did it. That right, Pete? I did it in self-defense. He was going to shoot me. Slim's still alive. Boys, carry him into the back room of the gold nugget. Wipe the handcuff, you, Pete. I done it in self-defense, I tell you. There'll be plenty of time to prove that. Go ahead, get in the bar. You'll have to wait until I see if anything can be done for Slim. Come on, King. Watch him, boy. They stretched Slim out in the back room. He was unconscious. I put all the men out of the room and bent over him to see where he was shot. As I did, his eyes opened and he tried to talk. He was very weak, but he had regained consciousness. I put my ear close to his mouth and got what it was he was trying to tell me. They were the last words he ever said. I covered his body and left, taking Pete with me back to jail. As we entered the jail, I saw no sign of old Jake the jailer, and I heard a strange bumping noise from Charlie's cell. I left King to guard Pete and hurried toward it. Watch him, King. Try anything, Pete. Don't worry. What? The cell door is open. Jake, what? No. Here, wait. I'll get that gag out of your mouth. 
There. Oh, where's Charlie? He grabbed me when I brought him a supper. He took my keys and my gun. I've been tied up here for hours. You mean he's trying to escape in this weather with no supplies? He probably got some in his cabin. Cut these ropes, will you? Sure. I've got to go after him right away. Well, he's had a good long start. I've been kicking this floor out trying to attract someone's attention. I've got another prisoner for you, Jake. See if you can keep him here. He's more important than Charlie. But, Sergeant, you can't find out where Charlie went. He's smart enough to cover his tracks. It's snowing for hours. He won't have to try. But I'll find him. Well, I don't see how you can. Won't have any trouble trailing him. I have his dog, Mike. We'll follow Charlie to the ends of the earth. And Jing and I will follow Mike. It was the end of the second day, Pat, when I topped a hill and saw the smoke of a campfire ahead. I tied my dogs and left the sled and started outward on foot with Mike on leash and King running free. As we got near, Mike began to yelp with eagerness, but I knew it was Charlie. I unleashed Mike and let him run ahead. King and I circled the fire. Darkness had settled, and as we came silently toward the fire, I could see Charlie with his dog in his arms. He was babbling with delight. Oh, boy. Oh, it's been a long time, hasn't it? We're together now. Get away, Mike. You followed me. Oh, good old boy. I knew you'd come if you got the chance. So did I, Charlie. Preston. You never should have tried to escape in weather like this. Well, you let Mike lead you to me. Well, you'll never take me back to hang. I told you I'd never hang. Charlie, no. Drop that gun. Get him. Get away from me. Get away from me. All right, King. I've got his gun. Back, fella. Are you hurt, Charlie? No. Why don't you let me do it, Preston? Rather die than go back. There's no reason for you to shoot yourself. You're going back, yes, but not to hang. I was trying to catch her, Charlie, to tell you you were a free man. A free man? But I killed Pierce. Killed Pierce? Oh, no, you didn't, Charlie. Pete and Slim had a fight. Pete shot Slim. Just before Slim died, he told me that he and Pete had done it. But how? Why? Well, you knocked Pierce out all right, Charlie. But Slim and Pete were the ones who hit his head on the stove and killed him. It seems that Pierce had a diamond pin they wanted. And they saw the chance to get it. Wow. If your dog hadn't... If stopped. my dog King hadn't stopped you from shooting himself, you'd never have known it. Well, come on, Charlie. You look pretty weak. That Sweeney's cabin's near here. Let's go. So, Pat, that's what I meant when I said Charlie wasn't exactly a prisoner. Well... It's sure a good thing he had a dog like Mike to find him. Uh-huh. <laughs> From the looks of him, he wouldn't have lasted long on the trail with no equipment. I've never seen anyone quite so tired. Yeah, for him, that you had a dog like King, saving his life the way he did. Yes, you're right, Pat. No. Ah, now I think we'd better call it a day. What do you say, King, old boy? <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. This is Larry McCann speaking. <laughs>